Today I'm going to show you how to use the layout view in the new 3.22 software to make some cool pixel mapping stuff. So right now I have just patched 256 RGB fixtures. Address doesn't matter because we're just doing this uh, on screen in the console. So we got our 256 fixtures uh, and I'm going to go ahead and store this to a group pool. So uh, we'll go to groups and then I'm going to enter on the keypad uh, fixture 1 through 256 to select all those fixtures we just patched and now they're in our group. Cool. Uh, next thing, I'm going to create a layout view. Go into other layout view uh, and then I'm also going to create a layout pool. And then I'm going to select those fixtures and store that to an empty pool or layout pool icon. Now when I select this, it's going to bring all those fixtures into our layout view in a straight line, which isn't really good for showing how pixel mapping works. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to first get rid of this grid, changing my grid size to zero, and hit setup. And then I'm going to arrange all these in a rectangle. And it gives us kind of a preview if we zoom in here, but this hasn't this transformation hasn't been applied yet until you hit apply. So now we have our grid 16 by 16 pixels. Uh, one other thing that we need to patch is the actual bitmap fixture um, because that's how MA controls video objects is through uh, basically an imaginary fixture that you're controlling with uh, a DMX address that it doesn't actually exist. It's not actually processing any DMX. So I'm just going to label this layer as uh, bitmap fixture, if I can spell it right. And we're going to go into library and type in MA lighting for the manufacturer, or just uh, MA, and then uh, bitmap. And you see we have a bitmap fixture with these different channels, all virtual channels. Bitmap one, that train horn in the background is going to be great for this video. Uh, and I'm just going to give this an ad or a fixture ID of uh, 1001. And patch doesn't matter. I usually throw it like a uh, universe like 100, just so it doesn't interfere with anything. And now we have our bitmap fixture patched. I'm also going to store that to a group. And that was channel number, excuse me, fixture number 1001. Store that. That's our bitmap fixture. To get these two things to interact with each other, we need to create a square around our fixtures that we want to apply the bitmap to. So to do that, you have to make sure you're in setup in the layout view. So you have to do the picture of the rectangle, and then you just, you have to make that sound effect while you do it. And change visual, visualization to uh, one of these options. These different options uh, mean a couple different things depending on what your layout view is actually representing. So if this is if your layout view is representing a top-down view of your stage, uh, I would probably suggest uh, doing the bitmap X Y because it, it it basically flips the entire bitmap upside down. So if you're looking at it from the floor, it would uh, yeah. Get my hands in the it's door. all about the hand motions. Looking at it from the floor, uh, it'll it'll look right in your visualization. I'm just going to do regular bitmap. Bitmap X inverts the X axis. Bitmap Y inverts the Y axis. Yep, like that. And that's pretty much it. Um, next thing you'll need to do, we'll do this on a second screen over here, is import some images to play with. Uh, you can also import WebM videos. Uh, I'm going to pick my external drive, go to bitmaps. Oh, this is a good one. So I'll just import this video as an example for right now. And we'll zoom in a little bit on this. So what I do now is I need to select my, select my bitmap fixture. Uh, and that calls it into the programmer. So then I have my options of dimmer, color, video. It works just like a regular lighting fixture. So if I say at full and then select a item, a, uh, a video item, uh, and then play, and then select the uh, output layer. This is the one tricky thing is before you actually get any output, even though I've put at full in the programmer, you need to choose 
this layout, layout one, to be our output layer. And now you can see we have, uh, it's just like the campsis. It's the exact same. <laughs> Man, no. it's been a day of campsis hate. <laughs> Gary's been all up in that. Yeah. <laughs> so there, uh, that's, 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 that's the basics. And then there's a little bit more detail that you can go into. Uh, if you don't know much about like programming video, it's really a lot like programming regular fixtures, but you have to, you have to realize there's no actual physical limitations with your video fixture like there are with physical fixtures. Like, uh, you know, your pan in a real fixture takes time to go from one, one side of the stage to the other. With this, it, you, can, you can have things snap from zero to 100 real quick and then back. And uh, that's one thing to keep in mind when programming effects for these. You can actually use ramp effects uh, and it actually works like a ramp should work. Here. We'll do a gobo. So this is like a really easy way to like not have to worry about getting your own content since most of these LED things that you use with the MA are going to be pretty low resolution. You can go into images. Uh, let's find a better one. Something that'll show rotation. And I'm just going to make an effect that rotates this. So we select our bitmap fixture, select their image. Our dimmer is still at zero, so it won't show up until we hit full. Now we can see it uh, in our uh, pixel map. And if we scroll through uh, a couple of these different video uh, parameters, we can go to scale, because the image of the gobo is actually filling that whole rectangle that we drew earlier. But if I want it to shrink down around the exact size of our actual area, let's use the X and Y encoders. And then from here, if I wanted to make that image rotate, because it's just a static image, the other, the one we just did was a, uh, a video that was encoded that way. But if I want to animate this, you can use a ramp effect. Uh, let's do up here. I'm going to add a ramp effect to the uh, V rotation Z axis, only parameter. I can then link this to speed one. Uh, and I'm going to change the form to ramp down. The reason I'm doing ramp down is again, like I mentioned, there's no physical parameters, so this will go, this will jump instantly back to its starting index position as soon as it hits 360 degrees in the uh, the waveform. So, to any luck, we now have a rotation that goes 360. It degrees. rotates. Yeah, and then we can assign Speedmaster. Special master 3.1, and now we can speed it up, slow it down, all that jazz. <laughs> I'm like in the process of making a bunch of like cool images and stuff that I can have sweep left to right on the stage. Yeah. Like the ramp movement and like the triangle movement are like now your best friends, whereas before you like hardly ever use them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you use ramp. I don't use ramp. I use ramp all the time. I use like sign only and pulse width PWM. Yeah, I use cosine a lot. I use bumps sometimes, and then you do bumps mm -hmm. on the console. Yeah. 